you touched on the nodes, the three different uh, air, earth, and then the ether. Could you explain those? Uh, from from my understanding, uh, aether node is required at least one per country because it, it services a large area and it, it, it bridges our network to legacy operators if needed and our network together over large kilometers or miles of spaces. And it's it's a, essentially a large telecommunication switch with a few uh, block, blockchain modules and, and other modules here and there to really set it apart from others. But uh, if you want to envision it kind of like a, a cell tower, I, su I suppose that you could. Um, and then the air nodes are the access layer. They are, uh, they are like a, it could be a small little Wi-Fi device for a house or a commercial unit for city use that could cover 300 meters or whatever too um and what you know what what type of air node you use is all going to be dependent on the location uh the types of users you have the numbers of users uh that you have but those are because they're the access layer they're going to be in service areas so if somebody says like hey i want to run an, an, an air node in canada right now it's like well we don't have the we don't have there. that yet yeah. yeah we don't have that yet because in order to run this network you, you have to be you know fully licensed and regulated it, mm -hmm. it is just like a mm -hmm. traditional mobile network but in the future and this is no this is no promises or anything like that there is a chance that uh people could piggyback off of our 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 legal framework right they could they could establish these nodes in these places mm -hmm. but that's so far down the line, it's it's only feasible, maybe. Um, but for right now, air nodes are going to be in service areas, and a lar a large part of the rollout that we're doing right now, following the TGE, is building these and setting these up because we're we're going to have to own a few of them uh, at the get go just to get the mesh started. Mm. Um. And then the Earth, Earth node. node, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I have a lot to say about this. I actually I actually wrote down some talking points on Earth nodes because okay. Earth nodes are super hot right now, really. Um, at least for uh, World Mobile supporters. So, mm. Earth nodes are like the backbone of the entire World Mobile chain because they're kind of like a Cardano stake pool mm. or in Ethereum or Bitcoin node, right? Because yeah. they validate and they process transactions made on chain. Uh, including but not limited to calls, text, data, peer-to-peer -peer transfer. Um, so to have a secure and efficient global network, we, we, we want to have a lot of them and we want to have them running at full health. And a lot of people are interested in those right now because they have no geographical restriction, right? Unlike the Aether nodes and the Air nodes. So you don't really have to be in Zanzibar or Tanzania to provide you know, blockchain services to those that use the network. Mm. Mm. Um, so due to that demand, a lot of people are really curious about what it takes to run one. And a lot of people already know by this point that it takes 100,000 WMT as a base requirement to uh, be accepted into the network there. Yeah. And in the future, though, that can be shared like uh, like a card on a stake pool. And, you, and you know, the, the operator can set the reward structure and all that. Um, and also one thing that we saw right now is, you know, a, a group of guys who, who passed KYC, they're like, well, we, we can't buy hundred K tokens, but we can buy X amount of tokens and, uh, have one guy pull it together for the earth node reservation, which I'll talk about soon. That's, that's totally okay. And that's a good idea too, especially if you want to participate in the reservation. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll get, I'll get to that. Sorry. I, I there's a lot to say about earth nodes. Yeah. Uh, but lately, people now, because they, they kind of understand that whole thing, they're, they're really curious about hardware and software requirements. They're like, well, what, is it, what does it take to run one of these? And a lot of the reason we're, why we haven't released any hardware requirements is because Earth nodes are actually being developed jointly with IOHK, and they're not done. They're just not mm. done yet, you know? Um, but we do know that there will be kind of two tiers of hardware levels that earth nodes will be able to run on. And the first is like a low, like a low spec, like a raspberry Pi four model B kind of, kind of thing, you know, for, you can have to let raspberry Pi four model B. You yeah. Have, have, you seen, have you seen these, these raspberry Pi? Nah, these? I, yeah. Just, I, I would just look that up. I don't know much about raspberry Pis, but 
everybody talks about them and they're they're super cool they just do everything we're not talking about a real like pie <laughs> made no, of raspberry. No. <laughs> yeah like you okay. connect the pie to the <laughs> unconnected people no it's, that's delicious but that's not what we're talking here yeah yeah it's like a raspberry pie like pi and it's like it's okay. like a, a it's like a little mini computer like a little mini server thing that you can do okay. all sorts of things with but so somebody will be able to do that uh and they and they'd be only able to run like a like the blockchain processing module which is which is totally cool but the second tier is like a medium or high spec uh kind of node which would be like a like a desktop computer or mm. like a hosted server kind of style and those would be for earth nodes with uh caas uh containers as a service modules um and the reason that those caas uh earth nodes would need a higher spec is because the encoding and decoding of media can be really intensive on memory and cpu so uh, yeah. the raspberry pi probably just doesn't cut it yeah um and nodes that have uh both the blockchain and the caas will be eligible for more rewards than just the blockchain earth nodes because the caas nodes will be called by the protocol more often mm -hmm. uh, because they actually interact with the uh you know the usage of calls text and data but the cost of operation is also completely different too you know the uh the uh the higher spec nodes will, will make cost more to maintain and all that so it's all up to people to figure out like what's right for them in the future um but also just to point out and i'm, I'm saying this on on your your podcast because it gives me a place to answer questions i get in the community and, and direct them to to watch some content so mm -hmm. i'm mostly just addressing okay. like, the questions they have yeah yeah uh, and but it's for the first time we've ever really said it like on a video but so in order for the caas earth nodes to significantly out reward the blockchain only earth nodes it needs to be near the optical op optical optimal routes of service um so if your caas earth node is here in california and the network is full blast over there in, in Zanzibar. Um, someone's European CAAS node will probably be called before the Californian node. But the blockchain module node, where it's blockchain only, that little Raspberry Pi is location independent. Okay. So anyone just running that style of node will be completely happy. And the reason that's important, because people are like, what do I, what do I need to build? Like, how strong does my computer need to be? It's like, well, if you're in Antarctica. Don't build the most expensive node. Like you don't need to panic yet, right? Okay. You just need to get your tokens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no matter what kind of Earth node you run, our token economics, which were written really cool enough by uh, uh, jointly actually with the fo the founders of Delphi Digital, are designed to provide inflation rewards uh, the entire the entire time and prior to any any node usage. So anyone would receive rewards when there's low usage while the network is growing. And therefore, even more so when it's being used in processing transactions. So nodes are nodes are profitable. Okay. Yeah, just due to just due to tokenomics, if if you're measuring in tokens, you know. Um, here's the other questions that that people are saying about Earth nodes. Uh, if someone has a hundred thousand WMT, do they have an Earth node? This is like a really common question. Yeah, no, you don't really. have an Earth node if you have a hundred thousand WMT. Like that's that's the token requirement like that doesn't factor in uh hardware or getting mm. accepted in the network uh if someone has a hundred thousand wmt are they eligible to get an earth node also also no um the earth nodes are limited to 1000 at main net launch mm. uh and after that we will only add them as per necessary like it's not like we're just gonna be like oh, unlimited earth nodes because we don't we don't actually need that many and it's not going to be like oh we're, we're going to add one because you you asked for it, you know, we're going to add them as they're needed. Mm. Um, so the, here's, here's how you, here's how you do get one. If you want one right now to, to be completely honest, the way that I would do it is I would, I would get my hundred K WMT, whether that's me and my mates buying or, or just me buying. And I would wait for the reservation, the earth node reservation, early staking rewards to come out. And people are always saying, when's the staking? Staking's after the TGE. We still got a few weeks of TGE, right? Because we're only on week one. As soon as that's over, a few weeks time will pass. Uh, I don't know how long because I don't I don't develop this this kind of this kind of stuff, but mm. 
then staking will open and staking will be facilitated through the vault. And uh, in its current iteration, people will be able to stake their WMPs directly from their wallet, which is really cool. They won't, they won't need to actually send their, their, uh, their tokens anywhere. Uh, there's three pools in staking for these early rewards. There's the Earth Node Reservation Pool. And this is the pool you go to if you want to reserve an Earth Node because just to, just to stake in this, you have to stake 100,000 tokens. And you can't stake like 120,000. You, you can only stake 100,000 or 200,000 because you, each one of those stakes indicates your desire to operate an Earth Node. Uh, the second pool is the public pool where there's no minimum for staking. Like that's, this is the place that most people should go to and, and probably will go to is public pool because um, the rewards are good and there's no requirements. You can just stake and get more WMP. It's freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. And then there's the private sale pool, which is only for the private sale uh, people. So probably honestly, nobody watching this video or, the, or this podcast or okay. nobody I've talked to either, honestly. So okay. um, the Earth Node Reservation Pool is, well, the first thing it does is if, if you stake, that means that if you complete the staking period, which I, I believe is about six weeks, don't, don't quote me on that. I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, you're then eligible because you stake that entire time that completes your reservation that if you were to build a node during that time or after that time, when mainnet launches after staking, you would be accepted into the network because you reserved it um, and, and you took the time to do it. If you stake in that pool, and you don't reserve an Earth node, uh, then I look at you with a, a stern glance of disapproval, um, and your position will uh, your position will be open for somebody else if you mm. don't build the node after after reserving it. You know, because mm. those those are for Earth nodes. Um, and then after that, after staking, we'll have we'll have software ready for you to put onto your your Raspberry Pi or your computer. Uh, and then we'll just be we'll just be running nodes, you know. Sorry, that was that was a lot. That's how it works. <laughs> dude. I just felt like I had a, a a college class on Earth nodes. A seven. That was seven my nine. first time, like really going through like how how that works. And I yeah, I, I, I I shine more light on like Aether nodes and Air nodes, but it's just really not what's important to the general people right now because those are so secluded to service areas right now whereas uh earth nodes are, are really what we need to get this this network started on the global scale 